And one thing that I've asked the panel to do, uh, because I think we all need a shot on the arm to go into this fall, I've asked for them to tell us their vision, their hopes, and their dreams for us this fall. So at this, to close up our time together, I'm gonna hand it back over to the panel to give us the motivation that we need to start the challenges that we're gonna be encountering, because this fall is not gonna be easy. But if we go into it with the right mindset and with the right skill set and to think needs before notes, we can do this. Urel, you wanna kick us off? Uh, okay, can you guys hear me? All right. Um, I guess I'll just be, try to be as brief as I can. I'll leave you with two stories about two different students in two very different situations, both of whom came to the class that I was teaching them with no prior experience about what we're doing and no clue how to do it or any real reason to think they'd be any good at it. Um, again, that loving, level playing field. So the first is Jonathan, who was in New York City, who probably is in his early 30s by now, because I've been at this a while. <laughs> but he, he was a very slight kid. I had him from for maybe kindergarten all the way to eighth grade. And he, we went on a trip once to Baltimore to perform, because we were invited to do a thing at the Annie e. Casey Foundation. And he told me, I was supposed to, I decided I wasn't gonna go back with the kids because it just so happened my father-in-law at the time was running that organization and I was gonna stay in Baltimore and send them back with a chaperone. And he looked at me as I was explaining all this to the kids, which I told him in advance. He said, but Mr. Lashley, you the whole fun. <laughs> and in that moment, it was such a powerful reinforcement of the importance of the relationship. You know, as, <clears throat> as I think Mike was saying, you know, that's why we do this, right? Um, for those connection relationships. I've had, I said like 30 or 800 kids. Every time I lose a kid, it kills me. Every time I, they move to a different school and I think I won't see them anymore, I can barely take it. So then the other, and he became, was one of the leaders in the group and struggled mightily with uh, behavior and feeling like he was not expected to succeed in lots of other academic situations. Then we'll talk about Kira, and he was African-American from Harlem. Kira is white from Madison, Wisconsin, probably is in high school now. She knew nothing about drumming, and the kids I had at this particular school, I had been training a long time and working with them, and they could play and perform a lot of West African traditional stuff by themselves, and I wouldn't have to show up. So one time they played for a, a thing we had called Read, Read Your Heart Out, where uh, African-American parents would come to school and read stories to children in all the different classrooms. And my group would play like a reception performance for them before they served them all a, a thank you lunch. And so they did this in my absence. And I showed up later that day for their usual drum class at the end of the, at the, end of the school day. And she came up to me in tears, livid, saying that through some miscommunication, I guess, all the kids had, it was about 40 of them that were playing in a group that year. I was teaching 40 kids alone by myself, which is a whole other thing we can talk about. But, um, and she said that five or six of them had to put all the drums away for all 40 kids because there was some miscommunication over who was supposed to go to lunch, when, and yada, yada. And so, and she looked at me and she said, and that's not the community that we practice in drum power. And I, I wanted to cry tears of joy because she showed me that these social emotional learning tenets or core values or human values of certainly of community was something that she had now owned as her own and was upset to see when they weren't adhered to in the way that she thought they should be practiced. So I'll leave you with those two stories just as exemplars of ideally what, what it can look like when students pay this kind of work forward. Thank Exemplars you. of the differences we can make. Thank you, Urel. Mike, can you send us off? Yeah, um, I just had the chance, if you haven't had a chance yet, to see uh, Michael Bonner speak. There's some stuff on YouTube. He is fantastic. Um, one of the quotes he left us with that just like hit home with me as we start this fall was, you can't demand a withdrawal from someone you've never made a deposit in. 
So make lots of deposits this fall, whether that's through email, virtual Google Hangouts, cards home to family. Your kids would, my kids were amazed when their teacher sent them something in the mail. Send something in the mail to your kid. Let them open a mailbox for the first time and find something for them. So make lots of deposits this fall. To my friends on the panel, the core sings the song for good. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I know that I've definitely been changed for the better and changed for good tonight. Thank you. Mike, thank you. Social capital, it's powerful. Uh, I remember when you were at Lake Forest College and we, we had a moment with that song. So thank you for bringing that up. Elise, send us off, please. I am a firm believer that we are never going back, that everything we do helps us to move forward. And so as I said earlier, this fall is going to make us all adaptive teachers. And I hope as we do that, we take the time to remember what this has taught us and changing the process of how and how we can continue to meet the needs of all of our students as we move into either hybrid models, whatever the models may look like, but most importantly, that our students can recognize that our situation is not the same as theirs. Some of them are gonna be thriving in this time, especially for my students who, who don't love socialization and being in person with other people, this is their jam. So taking those differences, recognizing them, appreciating them, and don't be afraid to be vulnerable, that is gonna build the true connection. This is a hard time, and hearing that, your students are going to appreciate that and recognize that. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Vulnerability, 100%. Absolutely. Bobby, send us off, please. Yeah, I just, I keep coming back to, um, it is so easy to dwell on how hard this is uh, to be having to reinvent how we teach. Um, but I think everybody that's joined us tonight, you are putting in the effort to learn and grow and that's what we need to keep doing you know like keep on figuring out ways to connect uh, and build that social capital and keep on finding ways to adapt and give ourselves grace to know that we're trying and we're not always going to succeed but we just keep trying right and that's what we can do focus on what we can do not what we can't we've been focusing on what we can't do for so long it's time for us to figure out what we can do thank you for that javier send us off at the end of the day all of us want to matter and i think that one of the most powerful things we can do this fall and beyond is to help students remember that they matter and especially that they matter to us regardless of their skin color uh, their ability their gender, their sexual orientation, gender identity, any of these things that they matter. And I think the way we can do that and the way I've been doing that for the last few years is to give them a daily expression of care. So I'm going to sh share with you what Mr. Rogers taught me and what I say to my students as they're leaving class every single day. You've made this an amazing day just by you being you. There's no one like you in the whole world and I like you just the way you are.